So my name is Oscar Alec. I'm a postdoc at uh, UC Santa Cruz uh, and also a uh, postdoctoral fellow at the uh, Open Source Program Office at UC Santa Cruz. These are four years of work that has been written up in a single massive artificial life paper or article uh, that we are presenting here at ALIFE based on basically an agreement between them. So thanks for uh, thanks for Isal for you know giving us this opportunity. Um, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, 3D slime mold. So our work on extending the slime mold simulations to third dimensions using a probabilistic approach to build something we call the continuous transport network. Uh, you can see that here. Those black and white white insets are basically the work we've been starting from. I'll I'll come back to what what that actually is. And there's the full reference to the to the paper in uh, Artificial Life. So um, let me start uh, with a motivation: why why we really wanted to design a three dimensional slime mold, uh, besides it being hopefully cool. Um, so who knows what this is? Okay, a few people very hesitantly. So uh, this here is the cosmic web and is literally the biggest structure that we know of in the universe. Um, when you zoom in onto the structure, you see individual galaxies as tiny little bright dots. Um, somewhere there is our galaxy, presumably. Uh, although not because this is a simulation, but you can think of it as well. Uh, and if you zoom out of this, well, you see the whole universe. So this is, this is the scale we are operating on. Um, we see these structures in uh, cosmological simulations all over the place since 2005. Uh, the one I just showed you was from 2005. This is a newer one called Eagle. Uh, we see the cosmic web in temperature and metallicity and all kinds of markers about the universe. We, you know, we just predict that it's there. Um, but when it comes to observing it, it's kind of a tricky thing. It's a very faint structure. You can't actually see it, not just with the naked eye, but also with a telescope. Is a Hubble Deep Space image. Those are galaxies, and you can't see any web-like or network-like structure in between them. So what's going on here? Well, turns out we have only indirect evidence of this structure. Simulations are, is one of them, but also this is the cosmic microwave background radiation. And that's our indirect evidence. You see those fluctuations in that? That's the imprint of the cosmic web onto the temperature of the universe. So anyway, um, we'll see why this actually matters. So um, I started working with astrophysicists on this problem four years ago, and uh, that's how long we've been hammering on this. And the rescue or the solution to actually finding the cosmic web came from this little creature um, called the slime mold. Um, we have been inspired by, uh, by an artwork by Sage Jensen that was all over Twitter in 2018. Uh, so these animations, which actually look fluid if, if they're not transmitted over Zoom, um, they show beautiful dynamics using millions of agents. And these animations have been created based on the model by Jeff Jones up in the upper left corner. So this was a, to me, very important 2010 paper, uh, also in artificial life. And uh, it kind of kickstarted the whole slime mold simulation craze uh, in the 2010s. Uh, showing that many geometric problems can be solved by simulating slime mold um, or also growing slime mold. So who here loves slime mold? Yeah, that's, that's very cool. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this thing is gorgeous. Also, uh, probably intelligent in some way, somewhat geometrically intelligent. And... You know, biologically, it's a protist, it's a single cell, there's millions of nuclei flowing around in these in this, uh, veins or whatever that is, tubes. Um, and it searches for food by growing laterally and just sort of following gradients emitted by food into the environment. Um, you know, people have shown really interesting solutions to problems, some of which are empty heart it actually can build optimal transport networks, just growing this thing on a bunch of old flakes, basically. Um, you know, Professor Adamatsky, whom you might know, or members of this community might know, uh, might know him, uh, even wrote an entire book about 
solving computational problems using a squishy blob as as an analog computer. Um, so that was that's pretty cool. Um, for us, uh, this is a paper from Cosmology. Uh, Cosmologists basically see the cosmic web as a transportation network for gas and plasma and, and all this stuff that's in between galaxies. And, you know, when you squint your eye a little bit and maybe color that thing yellow, maybe you can start seeing some similarity between these two. And it's not one-to-one, -one, but, you know, close enough so that we can start using this as a model organism to, uh, to uh, maybe solve this problem. So uh, let me tell you something about the model. Um, the model is called Monte Carlo Fizarum machine. Uh, Fizarum machine for obviously simulating the Fizarum and Monte Carlo because it's all uh, stochastic. And that's kind of the main, the main contribution of this work. So what it consists of is those green little things, they're called agents. And then those orange things, which are called data, <laughs> or which are just representing data in this animation. So our focus from the beginning wasn't just to simulate slime mold or what would it look like if slime mold was growing in 3D, but to actually solve a data scientific problem. And so those orange points or brown points represent galaxies in this, in this context. Um, they can exist in 2D or 3D. Um, and they emit this, this thing called marker field, which is uh, kind of a chemical signaling marker that tells the agents where the data is in space or where the data points are and what is their density, what is their concentration. And so then the agents themselves, they can freely move through space and they try to follow that, that grayscale marker field and just maximize the yield in every one of their steps. Um, sometimes they can deviate from it because again, it's all probabilistic. So sometimes they actually sample lower concentrations, but on average, the distribution will be proportional to the distribution of that marker of that grayscale field. And then the agents themselves, they leave something that's called trace. And you can think of it as a spatio-temporal histogram of the agents flowing through space. So that's basically the solution to the, to the reconstruction problem. That's our network. Now, obviously, there's one agent. Um, so what can we do with that? Well, if you, if you run you know, 50 of them, uh, you get those squiggly looking random spaghetti uh, on the left. But if you have 1 million agents, they actually converge to a stable equilibrium, uh, which you see on the right. And that's a three-dimensional scalar field. And that actually represents the density of the agents. And you can use it as a proxy for a network. For instance, the cosmic web network. Um, so far, so good. So um, sort of the novel contribution of this uh, is that all the three core steps of the agents uh, are stochastic. They follow the Monte Carlo sort of paradigm. So the things they do is they sense the environment in front of them, that they, they sort of sample what's in front of them and where should they move. So that sensing step uh, has probes and those probes are sampled stochastically according to a uh, PDF that you give to the agent, and that's basically a three parameter in, in the simulation. Um, they mutate their direction, so they kind of steer wherever you know they feel is the higher concentration of data, and then they move. And by just repeating these three steps, you get um, a complete random walk for every single agent. And if you run this thing in parallel for millions of them, well, then you get that continuous solution. It's very simple. It's like 100 lines of code. Um, very, very easy. So um, the contribution, this probabilistic thing that I've been, I've been talking about is actually um, an improvement over the, over the old Jones method that was really just meant to simulate what the slime mode looks like. So if you just implement it in 3D, that's, that's the, the, the image on the right, you get kind of a very condensed network, which is really what the slime mode does. So yes, you can grow slime mold in 3D, but it actually doesn't fit this data very well. And so that whole probabilistic spiel exists so that we fit these data set better because really they have a more fuzzy distribution. They are not as condensed as the real thing is. Um, by adding this whole Monte Carlo dimension to, to, the, to the solution, we also get tunability. 
So there is a single parameter. Uh, you can think of it as a sampling temperature or sampling exponent, which if you just change that, you get different concentrations or condensations of the, of the agents. So you can tune your network to whatever problem you might have. So, uh, what does this look like? Well, you don't really grow it from a single location as you would grow slime mold. You initialize the agents everywhere in space uniformly and then let them condense into that network. So here is, this is real time, maybe sped up a little, maybe twice. Um, but it basically fits in under a minute on a, on a single GPU. And you get a very consistent thing that animates in real time under normal circumstances. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's the solution. The data set here is actually a simulated data set. But next I'll show you what it looks like on, a, on an actual observational data set. So, um, it's cool to have a model, but it's even cooler to use it for something. So here is 37,000 galaxies. Uh, here is a 3D print of a solution to the cosmic web reconstruction on those 37,000 galaxies. You can pass it around. Um, it's a little fragile, but you know you can you can grab it. <laughs> um, so using this, we created the first density field map of the cosmic web. This was in 2020, and it kind of went viral. Um, because nobody ever created the map of the cosmic web. Uh, it was always an under-constrained problem. Um, so all these media just grabbed it and, and you know, it, it kind of became popular, which gave us motivation to continue working on this. Hence, four years later, I'm still talking to you about this. Um, we have actually shown that if you do that probabilistic extension, it fits this data much better. So the, the red thing on the right is, is the old uh, Jones model. When you just apply it to these cosmological data sets uh, on the left, this is ours. Everyone knows green is better, so just take my word for it. Um, anyway, bunch of interesting findings. Please ask me about it if you're interested. Uh, I don't really have time to cover everything. Um, this is a simulation of the fast radio bursts. These are massive pulses of energy that originate somewhere in the universe and then fly past the, 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 the galaxy of origin across many, many galaxies. And we observe them at distance. They're occluded by the cosmic web. And using this kind of reconstruction, we can actually understand these phenomena. So cosmologists are using 3D slime modes to understand real uh, observational problems. Um, we can do reconstructions like this, uh, even just a tiny thin sliver of of uh, galaxy data, you can just reconstruct and and then do measurements on it. Uh, we actually released a whole catalog of, of these reconstructions. So this is an open source data set that's part of the Sloan Digital Survey reconstruction um, or, or, you know, whole uh, corpus of data. Um, this is, I think, half a million galaxies we did with slime mold, and you can just download this data and, and play with it if you're a cosmologist. Um, Beyond, beyond cosmology, uh, there are school applications for 3D printing. So that not only it you know, helps you visualize the 3D data sets, but it also helps create structures that are pretty interesting. They resemble organic networks that you find in you know, all our bodies, uh, like the, the bone marrow or our, our veins or all pretty much capillaries that we have in our bodies. Uh, People tend to confuse them for neurons. I think that's a stretch, but who knows? Um, we managed to fit this to high dimensional data after compressing them to 3D. So this is the Vertuvec uh, language model. These things are becoming pretty popular nowadays. Uh, here is a method that you can actually reconstruct the density of the points in the actual embedding and then do queries into those into those points better than let's say using nearest neighbors as, as is usually done. Yeah, anyway. Finally, you can do art. 
So this was an artwork we uh, we presented two years ago here at Alive, although it was all virtual, so probably nobody remembers. But uh, this is a sort of physically based rendering of the same structure. And we actually really geeked out on this and did the research what slime mode looks like in the optical sense, and then render the cosmic web as if it looked, if it was slime mode, or what it would look like if it was slime mode. So it's a bunch of, bunch of phenomena there. Okay, so um, Slimo is known for generating cool patterns. Everyone knows that. Um, turns out you can you can use those patterns to make actual physical artworks. So this is a bunch of people painting on a surfboard using Slimo simulation projected on it, and then responding to what people paint. And this basically led to kind of a community-driven artwork. This is hanging in a cafe in Santa Cruz somewhere. Um, so this was a really really fun project. Um, so presently I'm working on creating an open source ecosystem that implements all these things and supports people in, in doing, uh, more of it because I can't handle it myself clearly. Um, not all of it anyway. So we call this Polyfy. Um, this is entirely written in Python, including the, the GPU simulation part. We use a very cool framework called Tai Chi, uh, which I can really recommend. Um, you don't have to write any CUDA kernels. Um, and this is meant to be a generally accessible data scientific framework that, you know, you can just download right now and, and use for network reconstruction problems. Um, I have to skip all these details, but um, love to talk to you about it afterwards. Um, Anyway, um, 3D slime mode is cool. It helps us solve problems, like actual data scientific problems. So it, you know, is not just pretty, even though I think it's pretty. Um, the reason we're presenting this here is because to our knowledge is the first sort of, uh, the first data, uh, data driven three dimensional uh, model of the slime mode and you know, it's it's pretty fast on a single GPU. It converges under a minute. Uh, it's interactive. You can you can play with it. You can change the parameters, visualize it in real time. So you get instant feedback to what you're doing when you're uh, fitting this. Uh, and it's great for outreach. We have made probably about ten different artworks uh, based on this, and they keep coming. Um, and now it's creating an open source piece of software that everyone can use. Uh, I want to mention two directions for future work. One is develop this piece of software. So if any of you feel inclined to help me with that and the whole team, there's dozens of people involved in this by now, uh, but we need all the help we can get to take slime mold off the ground. Uh, the second direction, the theory is among you. If somebody can help us actually understand how to mathematically reason about these things, uh, that would be great uh, because so far, we don't know. If we had that, we can actually simulate these structures across different disciplines and domains and understand why is it that there is so many network-like structures in nature and what do they have in common? So that would be beautiful. Um, bunch of people involved in this. Um, I don't have time to, to uh, give uh, a nod to all of them, but they deserve my thanks. Um, yeah, a bunch of links. Please take a picture of this. It's it's all in there somewhere. Uh, that's a live performance we did with Slime Mode that reacts to music. Uh, the music is off now, but all those beats and, and twists and pulses are uh, actual music beats. So uh, happy to talk about it afterwards and show you more. Any questions? We have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you.